not I don't like define myself as a strategist. I just define myself as a designer, and I think it's hurting a lot of designers mm-hmm. in general. Um, and like it's devaluing us as designers by everybody wanting to call themselves like strategists when in the end they're just designers. And designer being mm-hmm. a designer is like totally okay. And I think a lot of designers need to understand that being a designer is 100% mm-hmm. okay. Like that's a really really important thing to be, and it shouldn't you shouldn't have to feel this it to, is. like need to be like, a strategist, right? What is up, you guys, and welcome back to another Firefire podcast. Today, we have another design guru in the house. His name is Julian Rotundo. He's from Montreal, Canada. He's a design expert. He's a brand curator. And we're going to be talking about all things design for all you design nuts out there like me. And um, this guy has been working in design for many, many years. I saw him on, a, on another podcast. And I was like, dude, this guy has way too much knowledge to not be on ours. So he's just going to come over here. He's going to drop some knowledge bombs. We're going we're gonna to have a good time. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about it. And yeah, Saman, take, a, take away the plug. Yeah, so guys, please do like and subscribe. We work really hard to bring you guys new guests. And of course, people like Julian are taking out time to be on this podcast. I don't know why they're doing it, but they're here. So show some appreciation. Hit that like and subscribe button. And Julian, on to you. How have you been doing? Tell us a bit about yourself. Dude, I'm good, man. Other than, like we spoke about earlier, the cold is starting to seep in here in Canada. <laughs> That's where I live. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, with the Latin roots yeah. that I have, it's... Uh, like, how I cold does it get? It. Uh, it gets minus... Where are you from? Minus 20, like, on a bad day. It could get up to minus 30 with the wind, for sure. Montreal, Canada. Oh yeah, Ooh. dude. Last year, yeah, uh, shit, were you man. here for the polar vortex when it hit negative forty? Ooh, rough. Where, yeah, where? it was. It was crazy. You can yeah. throw a cup of boiling water like straight out your window, and it'll freeze before it hits the ground. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, not fun. Not fun. <laughs> but no, yeah, South, why aren't you taking so, away Julian, the where are you from side? originally? Uh, where? originally, I'm from Montreal. Yeah, uh, yeah. First of all, I want, I want to know from second generation Italian. So my, uh, my parents were mm-hmm. born in Italy. I uh, moved here in Canada, uh, and yeah, so I'm second generation Italian. The Latin roots, that's probably why I can't, mm-hmm. I can't deal with the cold still. The Latin roots. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally get it, totally get it. So Julian, uh, from what I know is that you run, a, you run a personal brand or like a freelancing brand, which is called Juju Branding. So why don't you expand upon that? What, do, what exactly is that? And, and just go from there. Yeah, sure. I can give you a bit of a backstory. Um, so I started my I guess design journey uh, when I first got my hands on Photoshop back when I was like 12 years old my brother had like a school project and mm-hmm. used it and I was like oh what's this I was super fascinated so I started using computer graphics back then um, yeah I always had a, a knack for creating anything um, I started doing that more like a hobby mm-hmm. started doing a lot of like surreal imaging and stuff like that uh, and then basically mm. um, I graduated high school and I didn't know if I could actually have a career in design. So I took the other route, which mm. was electrician, actually. So I graduated electrician school. Went, oh. Yeah, I graduated electrician school. And then I worked in uh, for a really big electrician company here in Montreal, probably the biggest actually, uh, for about four years. Okay. And in those four wow. years, I was like doing okay. like random side hustles with like small businesses and stuff like that for design. Uh, nothing crazy, just like logos and yeah. stuff like that. And I, I said to myself, yeah, like, yeah. why am I, why am I doing this on the side when I can just, you know, maybe do this full time? So I said, you know what, screw it. Go in. I'm gonna quit this go job all in and and just go back to school. <laughs> yeah. So I went back to school, graduated. Yeah. Um, once I graduated, I left for a little bit for about six or seven months. I uh, went to Asia for a little bit. Uh, then when I came back, mm. um, I found a job at an agency. I did two four years at about two mm-hmm. different agencies and then I said to myself you know what the agency life is mm-hmm. great but I think it's not for me I'd rather have my own freedom I'd rather make my own hours and work for myself uh, so I created some runaway for myself yeah. uh, to fail because I knew I was gonna fail at least at least at the beginning right mm-hmm. so uh, I did the first year mm-hmm. it was pretty horrible I don't know what the hell I was doing I was like running around looking for clients mm-hmm. uh, it was very confusing I know. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And then after that, <laughs> stuff started yeah. picking up. I started getting the flow of it, the hang of it. Um, and now yeah. we're on year three and it's, uh, it's great. I'm loving it. It's year beautiful. Three. That is really nice. So w- where do you think the biggest bulk of your clients has, has been able to come through? Was it referrals? Was it, um, yeah. social media marketing? What was the, what was the one thing that brought in the biggest influx of good clients? 
Yeah, so for me, definitely it was referrals, 100%. Um, at least the beginning portion of it, because social media wasn't like mm-hmm. uh, a catalyst yet for me. It wasn't something that I was doing at the time. Uh, mm-hmm. So for me, at the beginning, it was mm-hmm. definitely referrals. It was you know providing good services and good work for my clients that I had, and then literally asking them if they knew mm-hmm. anybody uh, that can use my services, and then it would basically snowball from there. Um, and then once I started implementing Damn. social media stuff, uh, I got some stuff from social media. It wasn't like a huge thing and still isn't to this mm-hmm. day. Uh, you know, a lot of my a lot of my clients mm-hmm. do come from referrals. A lot of my quality clients come from referrals. Instagram, mm-hmm. I'd say, you know, maybe 20 percent, maybe 30 percent of my business right. comes mm-hmm. from Instagram. Uh, I'd say another 20 percent mm-hmm. now is more LinkedIn, actually. So my LinkedIn okay linkedin yeah i've heard linkedin is crazy i've heard linkedin is crazy in terms of its growth and reach i have been i've been going hard on linkedin as well for the past it's month pretty solid. And i have been seeing crazy crazy organic growth i've seen i've seen that myself as well um so uh julian what i want to know is that how do you price your services are they value-based are they project-based or are they time-based like because i've been i've been doing a lot of research i've been i've been studying this as well so how do you primarily price your services yeah so it's either project or hourly uh, hourly is mostly for retainer clients. So, for example, let's say I'm doing some consulting for a client or mm-hmm. art direction for a client on a month-to-month basis. Uh, that's usually an hourly thing, only because the project to the scope is usually undefined, right? So, for example, mm-hmm. let's say one month uh, mm-hmm. the work is you know 10 hours, and then the next month it's 20 hours. Uh, it's really defined in the beginning of the mm-hmm. of the engagement. So, for example, for some clients, I'll do, okay, let's say we're consulting mm-hmm. for you. Uh, I'll do maybe 10 hours. I'll dedicate 10 hours to you, right? And those that those 10 hours don't roll over. So, mm-hmm. basically, whatever happens, you have to allocate those mm-hmm. 10 hours to me, no matter what. Um, so, that's a retainer kind of contract. Other than that, it's right. more project-based, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump More project-based, for sure. So, Julian, I know that, well, one, I'm not big in the design world at all. You know, I'm... I moved towards the engineering side of stuff, but I know you do brand you, you do brand identity for people, and from what I've seen, just from like you know working with Saad, is that a lot of that? It's there's a lot of different ways in which you can do that. I've seen Saad do branding designs for restaurants, where he's come up with everything from their logo to their menus, and I've also seen brand design for stores, where you have a whole different set of things that you need to create. So what I want to know is, what do you enjoy creating content for? What services or industries? Do you, you know, you get a project for and you're like, yeah, this is going to be fun. Time to create the latest restaurant menu. Yeah. <laughs> what gets you going? Um, what gets me going, I guess, are motivated entrepreneurs or motivated uh, decision yeah. makers. Right. So yeah. for me, if, if a client comes to me and approaches me and they just seem very unmotivated or they don't have a clear business plan uh, to their service or mm-hmm. product, then I don't get motivated either. Right, so there has to be kind okay. of like a give, like on both sides, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, so if if somebody comes up comes to me mm-hmm. and they have a very clear understanding of their business, they understand it, they have a very clear business plan, I get motivated because I know that that person is setting themselves up for success. Right, a brand identity is not gonna push the needle okay. by itself. Right, you can't just do a brand identity for somebody and like, yeah. okay, here you go, you're gonna be super successful. That's unfortunately not how it works. Mm-hmm. Right. There has to be yeah. a even exactly. flow around like the whole thing. So somebody that has a solid business plan, a good product or service, a differentiating factor, and then allowing us to communicate that visually will definitely help. But it can't be one or the other, mm-hmm. basically. Okay, so people people are passionate about what they're doing and are invested as much as you are. That's yeah, definitely. that's a solid place to start. And to move a bit further to the side, because I love asking random questions. Um, given that you're an entrepreneurial spirit, my first question is, do you even have free time? And my second is, what do you like to do in it? Like that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So here's the thing. Some, I, my free time is varies, depend from like month to month, right? Um, I do freelance for the sole reason to have that free time. I think there's more to life than just working. Um, and that's kind of the reason mm-hmm. why I did this whole freelance, right? It literally says it in the name freelance, right? Um, <laughs> it, it really depends how much work you want to put. Yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> so for me, for example, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. For, for like let's say the last couple of weeks, I've been pretty busy. Um, but maybe in the month of October, I might say, you know what? Like screw it, I'm gonna take a week off or something like that. 
just because I can. Um, so I guess it depends on myself, mm -hmm. on how much free time I, I want to have. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it can get super hectic sometimes, yeah. but I, I feel like I'm more of a, yeah. and I don't think this is optimal, but I'm more of an intensity over consistency kind of guy. So I like to okay. be stressed out okay. for like two, three weeks, <laughs> like hardcore, and then like just like completely oh, disconnect. That is week not the way I work. Yeah. That is exactly how I work. Hell to the no. <laughs> Hell to the uh, no. That is something that I would nah. never do. That, that is setting me up for failure, in my opinion, <laughs> straight up. Nah, and Julian, Julian. Yeah. one thing that I, I, thrive one, in thing, stress, one thing man. that I learned I, really quickly, one thing that, yeah one thing that i learned really quick I, I think there's a bunch of lag but fuck it um one thing that i learned really quickly when Sorry, i went into the whole branding and the whole uh, logo identity design um uh field is that branding is not just visuals it's the thinking that goes behind it it's the it's the it's the thought that goes behind the brand it's the feeling and it's the emotions and all that and it's very very technical so what was the biggest shock to you when you or, or like or like the biggest you know discovery for you when you went and you know dove into the whole world of branding and design hmm. i mean a lot of doors there's a lot of stuff that kept adding on to the pile of, of branding branding is like it's a really vast sea of stuff that you can get into because when you think of branding, um, it's more than just identity, right? It's more than design, like you said. It's business plans, it's it's partnerships, it's there's a lot of stuff for brand branding. So when people say branding, it can mean a variety of different things. Um, so I guess for me, um, I don't know, it's a good question. There's a lot of different things that, that I guess struck a nerve. Um, but there is one thing I like to I like to get on, which is this whole talk about brand strategy. I don't know if that's something that you guys are familiar with, or mm. if somebody has spoken to you or brand strategist in am. general. Yeah. So yeah, I've taken some marketing so just, classes. So, 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 so yeah, just give yeah. Salman like a, so give Salman just like a brief context of what that is, and then we can go forward from there. And the viewers. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is that there yeah, isn't the much viewers. context right now because everybody has a different view as to what it is. <laughs> but for the majority of it, yeah, I did a lot of research mm -hmm. on brand strategy because when I was, you know, in that section of my my journey, I was learning about what brand strategy is. Why is everyone a brand strategist all of a sudden? And what is brand strategy? Uh, and I realized that really what it is, a lot of people are using it is more of a discovery, right? And that's fine. It's just not mm -hmm. necessarily a strategy. Like, for example, if I tell you a chef, right, he has a strategy to to accommodate uh, and and work through his his kitchen. Right. He's not a strategy, a strategist chef. Right. He's just a chef. Right. And designers have mm -hmm. strategies to get their end results. But if you're using a strategy to get a result that's always the same, then it's not necessarily a strategy. Right. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to a business and I'm telling okay. them, like, this is I'm going to give you a brand strategy. But the end result is an identity design, right? And maybe some some collateral and mm -hmm. and some deliverables like websites and stuff. Well, then it's not really a brand strategy. Mm -hmm. It's more of a my this is my design strategy, mm -hmm. right? It's my strategy to get to yeah. my end product, which is totally good, totally fine. But I think that's mm -hmm. where there's like the gap and there's like a lot of misconception about brand strategy and what it really is. So I did a lot of research and I was stuck in this like mm -hmm. like wormhole of like what brand strategy is. So I stepped away from all that stuff and I'm not, I don't like define myself as a strategist. I just define myself as a designer. And I think it's hurting mm -hmm. a lot of designers mm -hmm. in general. Um, and like it's devaluing us as designers by everybody wanting to call themselves like strategists when in the end they're just designers. And designer, being mm -hmm. a designer is like totally okay. And I think a lot of designers need to understand that being a designer is 100% mm -hmm. okay. Like that's a really, really important thing to be. And it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to feel this. It too, is like need to be like a strategist right so yeah that's a little a little rant a little rant for me sorry but yeah that's good. you know i mean don't i'd say worry. The don't worry thing buddy has got to be you know like explaining that to the clients like okay yes this man says he's a brand strategist mm. but look at the value you need and that's where that's where i think designers are the ones who need to make sure they keep making a clear message as to the value they provide but of course, I'm not in the design industry, so I don't want to reach any further than I can. <laughs> so nah, nah, you, you can make away. all the assumptions you want. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Julian, um, uh, another thing that I really um, that that I'm really interested to know is that um, on 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 the other podcast, you were saying that 
in order to you know somewhat onboard clients you offer them a free discovery session essentially by mm-hmm. when you when you discount it into into their into the final deliverable fee so why don't you expand upon that further because i found that to be a really smart smart way of getting like you know people that that you know you essentially want so take it over buddy yeah sure so basically um my discovery sessions or some people call them brand strategy sessions right my discovery sessions um Mm -hmm. vary between you know three to eight hours it really depends on the the company and the problem we're trying to solve um so basically Mm -hmm. my process is i'll onboard them and i'll tell them like look my discovery session fee is x right and if you if we move forward after the discovery session and we go through a proposal phase then that fee that you gave me is abnulled and it's implemented in the proposal right does that make sense yeah great so yeah so basically that i use this in a way for me Mm -hmm. to build trust with the client and also it gets their feet wet so that Mm. they almost feel like they should just continue the process at this point they're obligated right but the 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 main they're obligated to you on top of that yeah wait wait, no continue continue i thought the main idea there is is to build that trust right it's allowing me you know three five, six, eight hours to be with the client and for me to show value for them, right? And to them, for them to see my process. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's been working great. I have like really, really good success with it. Um, everybody that I've done an onboarding with thus far has gone through the, the whole process with me. Mm. That's really good wow. to hear. Dude, wow. I feel, like, I feel like that's the smartest way to do it because it gets the they have their skin in the game mm. they, they get to build trust with you because oftentimes people people try to build trust on the phone call when they're trying to sell them something you only have what a few minutes to do that whereas you julian you have three to eight hours to do that and on top of that worst case scenario you get paid at the end of the day right and so, it's not even much smart move julian i'm, I'm definitely going to be implementing that it's oh yeah it's not much yeah yeah like that's it's like honestly I, I charge them a day rate right so whatever you feel comfortable for an eight hour job rate. i charge them that and usually it's not that bad compared to what they're probably going to spend in the long run. So it's for them, it's a very low risk mm-hmm. and it allows me to kind of show that value for them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys noticed Damn. To, to go off on a completely, you know, just a side note. You lost power. All my, all my light, no, my lights just turned <laughs> off because um, I have like this whole Google Home smart <laughs> system set up and I've usually left for work at this point yeah. in the day. So that's why they just turn off after <laughs> I've left. And they just went off, and I'm like, "Damn, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get shit when I it's go to work, work time, today. buddy." Get but, to- <laughs> but this is this is honestly worth it. But it is what it is. Yeah, um, but, Julian. Yeah. One thing that I want to know is that when you were when when you were delving into the whole design world in the beginning, because I'm always in because I'm always very interested to know the mindset of successful designers of what they were like when they were like you know starting off and everything. What was the biggest misconception you had about this entire industry? and something that you had to be something that you had to change your entire mindset about hmm um that's a good question i would say thanks buddy <laughs> i tried <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a good one um <laughs> no are you, are you are you talking about as like a freelancer or more so um where whenever you decided that you needed a big mental shift or like or you realize that oh this is not how things work this is how things work whenever that may be could have been yesterday (laughs) um i think it was more (laughs) so the value of things and the mind the mind shift of not necessarily selling somebody a product or a service it was more selling somebody something that they found valuable i think that was a big shift or like solving a problem that too was a big shift for me uh, seeing things as problems and mm. seeing them as problems to solve, right? So instead of say, like trying to sell a logo, yeah. it would be more as to what will a logo do for your business, let's say, right? Along those lines. So like if there's logo designers exactly. out there and you guys are trying to sell a logo, sell it as a as more of a, a problem that you're trying to solve, whether it's, you know, uh, even, a, even a problem of confidence. Like that's one thing that a lot of my clients come back to me and tell me like, after our engagement, I have immense confidence just because of the clarity that I have based on, you know, the discovery that we went through. And also just now I have confidence in the way that I look, Mm -hmm. I can enter the market with confidence. So that confidence right there, that's a problem. And if you're able to solve that problem, perfect. What's that problem worth to your client? Right. Perfect. So I would definitely say that shift was definitely exactly was 
seeing things as problems and how can I solve those problems, mm -hmm. definitely. That's really nice. Exactly. And I feel like I, I feel like I've also I've also gone through that same exact shift. I was also um, I generally I'm an artist to begin with, so I wasn't a designer to begin to for, for, from the start. I've been doing art and painting all my life, and then I, and then only recently, only like five six years ago, I, I made that shift into design and everything. And it wasn't, and I was just flabbergasted to know that it just goes way beyond visuals. Just because something looks nice, why does it look nice? Mm. Why does it fit in well? Like for example, you go to McDonald's, like over here. I don't know about I don't know in Montreal, Canada. Over here, McDonald's is a big thing. If you own a McDonald's franchise over here in this country, it's bound to goddamn uh, work. There's no other restaurant franchise that works as well as McDonald's. So I'm often like, you know, studying those case studies. How are those spaces made? How, how are the visuals interacting and all that? And I just find that really interesting. What's, what's one of your favorite brands that you connect with the most? Because for me over here, it's McDonald's a bit. Because I just ate McDonald's right now. <laughs> well, for you, what's, what's a brand wow. that you connect with? <laughs> um, hmm. There's so many. Um, I definitely, I'm a big advocate for GoPro. Your favorite one, off the top of your head. I love GoPro, honestly. GoPro, oh, really? Yeah, I go. I think GoPro is cool, man. Like why? The way they, I love the the way they they, they marketed themselves in the sense where they really, really, really champion their audience, right? Like if you look at all their marketing collateral, it's mm. it's like their whole audience just makes the content for them, right? And they really use that as a platform for their audience, mm. and I think that's yeah. it's genius and it's it works super well. I love it. I that absolutely love the, the way that they go about it. And their products are really good. Like, yeah. straight up. I'm a huge advocate for them. Their products are amazing. I know there's a lot of products now in the have market. Have you seen... Go ahead. Yeah. Have you seen Red Bull's branding? Have you seen... It's very similar to GoPro's. Have you seen the way Red Bull markets? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yep. Same thing, right? The champion yeah, there. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. I'm a button and say, personally, I really... I used to love, I don't know if this is true anymore, but about five, 10 years ago, Google had what is probably my favorite branding strategy of all time, where they decided to make the push towards what they termed material design. They looked at just, you know, the world around us and all our devices and how everything was like weird, cluttered, curvy, clunky. And they were like, okay, guys, we're going to throw this all out the window. We're going to make it smooth, sleek. We're going to have very simple design language and then you know that's greatly influenced what they've been doing for the past couple of years and i think that was that was a shift that mattered to me because we all use these devices all the time and they rebranded in a way that made our lives feel cleaner simpler and more put together and it made me feel like less of a mess you know which that matters mm -hmm. As long as everything is super interconnected, mm -hmm. right? So it really helps the situation. Yeah. Like I, now that you say that, honestly, I use mm -hmm. everything Google almost. Like, <laughs> yeah, my, exactly. My phone is Google at this point. Really? Yeah. Google phones. Really? Are, you, you don't use Apple? I thought you'd be an Apple guy. No, nope, not an Apple guy. Be an Apple PC guy. guy. You're not. Hey, really? PC guy. Welcome oh, to the gang. <laughs> PC master race, baby. Welcome. To <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> oof, oof, oof. I mean, I'm more I'm more oh. PS4 than PC, but yeah. I do appreciate PCs over Macs. Yeah. When you asked that, when you asked me earlier what I like to do on my free time, uh, I didn't answer that, and that kind yeah. of leads into this. I'm I like I love gaming, so that's that's. The oh yeah. yeah. Really? Dude, what what do you like play? to play? What do you like to play? Let's talk about that right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, <laughs> I I started playing League of Legends like when se in season one, so like ten years ago, now. Wow. Yeah, and I I don't like I play it on and off here and there like with friends. Um, but yeah, I like a lot of single player games. I love like Dead Souls. Uh, uh, what am I playing really? Soon? Have you guys nice. played that game? It's pretty popular now. It's called Among Us. It's super like no, I've been simple. meaning to. Among Us, I've heard of it. It's basically so. This is the one that I was begging you to play with me all weekend. I swear to God, I've been on my friends like all week yeah. to play Among Us with me, and they were like, <laughs> "Yeah, at some point." And they're like, "What is Among Us about? How do I play Among Us?" Man, it's getting people on board is so yeah. much work sometimes. Yeah, for sure. You do need a lot. Like, can you have you played Fall Guys, Julian? I haven't, but I I've seen it. I've heard about it. <laughs> it looks it looks pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's dude. Yeah, their that design language is so interesting. No game looks looks as looks visually similar to that game, and the way their mechanics work, the way their characters hop around, their physics—it's just interesting, Julian. You should do the a case study on that. Trust me, it is in. 
Yeah, the sounds. <laughs> Good Julian. You should play Fall Guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to yeah. pick it up. But hey, on that note, yeah. guys, I and think we're out. This has been show, super guys, fun, Julian. You take it away. Awesome. Yeah, right. this has been super fun, Julian. Guys, please like and subscribe. Julian, if there's any game that we play that's in common, I want to play against you, <laughs> and I want to kick your ass at it, or yeah. have you kick my ass. Either way, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta make this go, happen. Boys. <laughs> you, you play on PS4 or PC? Yeah. Well, I play on PS4, but I don't know uh, if you're in a Warzone. I know that's a cross-platform mm, game. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I well, we'll find VRs something, for, buddy. For a while. I played a lot of Apex Dude. and stuff. Mm. Oh, I love Apex. When that game gets cross play, I'm going to hit you up and we're going to play again. Classic. All right. All right. Sounds good, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. See y'all later. Right. Peace, guys. Peace. Peace.